Hello, my name is Jerry Wise and I'm a relationship expert and the director of the Center for Self-Differentiation at Family Tree Counseling Associates in Carmel, Indiana on the north side of Indianapolis. I do individual, marital, and family coaching. And I'll bet with this topic of this video, you probably don't hear much about this subject. The topic of this video is entitled, Over Seriousness Kills Self-Differentiation. I have a lot of folks who contact me who are interested in learning more about self-differentiation and a family systems approach to being self and learning to increase your sense of self in a healthy way. And they are always talking to me about how they can improve their self-differentiation. So, first of all, what do I mean by over-seriousness? Over-seriousness is a reactive state when we become reactive, when we become immature, when we become naive, but it's a reactive state in which we enmesh through seriousness and intensity. This lessens our self-differentiation and clouds our self-awareness. It also indicates we're not very self-aware at that time. Recently I was watching the comedy series The Office and in fact the whole series is based on a <clears throat> back and forth dialogue between Dwight and you don't have to be familiar with the show but Dwight becomes over serious so often so does Michael the manager many people become over serious at certain times and it creates a, a comedy and uh, whereas Jim and Pam who are characters in the show uh, are not quite so serious about life and are more flexible and are able to stay more themselves and not get caught up in the immaturity and the craziness of the um, uh, storyline of the office comedy and so what happens is so often people are talking and then someone all of a sudden becomes very serious and this creates a humorous situation well in real life if we're the ones becoming serious it doesn't feel very funny the person who's become over serious has become over serious and so therefore they don't see the humor they're not flexible, they're not more loose internally, they've become solid or rigid at some point. And I think this reflects a level of self-differentiation that's lower. It also tends to freeze us up. We tend to become more paralyzed inside and have fewer options emotionally and mentally. Healthy closeness is good. Enmeshment and fusion hinders intimacy and calmness in a relationship system. And this video is about one of those concepts and skills we learn in practicing self-differentiation. It's similar to the confusion skill that I mentioned in the video, and I hope you'll watch it. Uh, and I have a video on confusion and how it can be a helpful way to stay self-differentiated. So, why does over-seriousness equal reactivity? And by the way, serious is not a problem. Over-serious is a problem. Certainly if I go into a funeral, I'm not going to be very playful in that situation. I'm going to be more serious or somber. But someone becomes, can become so over-serious that, in fact, someone does something funny to kind of break the over-seriousness um, tone that's felt. The same thing that happens at church, at synagogue, in different places where we're supposed to be uh, serious. If it becomes too serious and something uh, something very human happens, then everybody kind of laughs and it breaks that over-serious tone. So why is over-seriousness reactivity? Over-seriousness is too much intensity which inhibits relationships fluidity and the healthy relationship dance. In other words, once someone becomes over serious, it kind of stops the interplay between the two people in a relaxed and fluid way. And that over seriousness is about our immaturity when we become over serious. 
And by the way, this video is about our own overseriousness. Another video I'm going to do is about how do you deal with someone who has become overserious? How can you how can you deal with them in a self-differentiated way? In this video, it's how can I understand my overseriousness and get an idea as to what it means and how to examine it so that I can become healthier and more a sense of self. Why does overseriousness equal reactivity? Because when we become overserious, it's like grabbing the lapels of someone else in the relationship. Whoever I'm relating to, it's like grabbing their lapels with my overseriousness. With our overseriousness, we miss the process of what's going on in our relationship. And we actually end up focusing on the content of the relationship and not on the process of the relationship and what's going on. For example, when I was uh, a parent and my son was very young, I told him he couldn't, couldn't go see a friend. He was, I don't know how old, seven, eight. And he wanted to go to his best friend Tommy's house. Well, it was nine o'clock at night. It was a school night. And of course, uh, he couldn't go see Tommy. We weren't going to call Tommy's parents and say, hey, can Andrew come over and play with you? Uh, certainly, it just couldn't be done. And a good parent would not allow that. So I said, Andrew, no, I'm sorry. We can't do that tonight. Uh, it's about time for bed. We're not going to have you go see Tommy. Andrew becomes upset, as kids will do. It's appropriate. And he goes, oh, I just hate you, Daddy. You're, you're the worst dad in the world. Now... Many parents at that point would become over-serious. In other words, they focus on the content of what Andrew is saying and start defending why they're not the worst parent in the world. Uh, some parents would become over-reactive or over-serious and become over-authoritarian. Well, I'm just going to spank you or I'm going to discipline you harshly for saying those harsh words. Either way is over-seriousness. Then there, I think, is a more self-differentiated way and a less immature way to react to a child who's doing something to try to get you to do something they want to do, which is Andrew's goal. Andrew's goal was not to shame me about being her dad. Andrew's goal was to get me to let him go see Tommy. And so when he said, Dad, I hate you, you're the worst dad in the world, I remember saying, Andrew, I think you're right. Conversation's over. It takes two to argue. And I wasn't going to argue with an eight-year-old about whether I'm the best dad or the worst dad, because that's not even what this whole issue was about. The whole issue was, no, you can't go to Tommy's, and that's all that matters. I'm not going to become over-serious about your pleadings. So, no, you'll just have to go up to bed and just remember you have the worst dad in the world, and hey, that's... There's no other dads available, so I'm your dad, and that's the way we have to deal with it. So becoming over-serious can really cause problems in a relationship, for parenting, for in marriages, because the same thing happens in marriages, too. How many times do spouses say to other spouses, you know, well, if I had a wife who was halfway as good as so-and-so, you know, and, and, or, and it's just... Uh, it becomes something to get someone's button pushed. And in the world of self-differentiation, we don't want to allow our buttons to be pushed. That gives someone else too much power. And when we've grown up in dysfunctional families, we tend to have buttons in which we give uh, our power away. And so with Andrew, I wanted to deal with what was going on, not what was being said. And so my response was about what was going on. In other words, he'd like me to get reactive so that he could win and either go to Tommy's or I would become upset. Well, I'm not going to do either, so I'm just going to agree with him. And that tends to defuse what's actually going on without focusing on the content. Why does overseriousness equal reactivity? Because when we become overreactive, we become less aware. And I know in the, in the show, The Office, and again, I hate to go back to that if you haven't watched that show, but you've known people like this. Dwight is the one who is, he's pretty immature emotionally, and he can easily be tricked. He's naive. Uh, he's not a dumb man. He's a very intelligent man, 
but emotionally his IQ is kind of low. And so people can trick him and do things like that. They do that to each other throughout the show. And so with the, um, when Dwight becomes over serious in a reaction to Pam and Jim, for example, he loses a sense of self-awareness and doesn't realize what he looks like, how he's acting. Uh, you can just notice a lack of self-awareness all over. Well, the same is true for us when we become over, over, uh, over serious. Think of the parent whose child says, oh, I just hate you. I wish I had Susie's mom for a mom. And then your child's mom or excuse me, your child says this to you, and then you start going crazy and, and feel insecure and guilty because you're not as good a mom as Susie's mom, and then you start acting outside yourself. And then we stop having self-awareness. That's the problem. And we start looking odd or funny because it's not really us. We'll either overreact and maybe punish too harshly, or we'll go cry off in the corner, or and and it's just it really becomes a, a, a situation in which we become self unaware. Why is over seriousness equal to reactivity? Because we become rigid and inflexible, and we're less open to ourselves and to others, as I mentioned earlier we really do close down our awareness on what's going on when we become over serious. So let me give you some examples in which over seriousness occurs. And by the way, I'm not trying to argue any of the political issues or the social issues that I may bring up. I'm simply giving examples of over seriousness. Someone can be talking and today, Obamacare or the affordable health care is kind of a hot topic for many people. It divides people because they become over serious about one side or the other. So just go to a, you know, go to your office uh, water cooler, and if someone's saying, you know, I've got a nephew who just lost his health insurance, which by the way I have, and I thought, well, maybe he could get health insurance through the Affordable Care Plan, and I'm just talking out loud, and then someone says, well, oh my gosh, not Obamacare. Well, that's the worst thing that's happened to our country. It's going to destroy our economy and it's going to destroy our healthcare system. Now, I was simply pondering whether my nephew, it might be something he might look into or not, they become, the other person becomes over serious about that issue and start preaching it or, and that over seriousness is a part of reactivity on their part because I realize they're not being very rational at this point. They're thinking with their emotions, not their thoughts. And they have been caught, caught up in their own emotional thinking process. And so they're not themselves. They're who they think they should be or a cause they think they should have. I wasn't even arguing the cause either way. For or against Obamacare, for or against the affordable health care costs. I wasn't even arguing that. I was just pondering what if my nephew did X, Y, and Z. Um, and I think that happens in politics, in religion. If you want to find people who become over serious, talk about politics, talk about religion. And I think that's why many people advise when you have family gatherings, families should not talk about politics or religion. And why is that? Because inevitably, a number of people become over serious about it and can't have a discussion about it. They become over serious, not serious, over serious, and they become rigid. Uh, they become either preachy or defensive or reactive. Or <clears throat> if I come to this house one more time and hear somebody talk about George Bush, I'm never coming back to this family gathering again. And again, that's reactivity, and then I have to cut off as a result of that, which indicates a low level of self-differentiation, not a higher level. And so we're trying to work towards raising our level of self-differentiation. I think, so there are a number of religious and political issues that can cause uh, reactivity or over-seriousness. The same is true in relationships. Uh, we can become very... Um, serious about that. 
Uh, for example, a husband is talking to his longtime wife. They've been married 20 years. And he says, you know, my first girlfriend in high school and I went to Kings Island and we really, really enjoyed it. And the wife says, well, you never invited me to Kings Island the whole time we've been married. Do you identify the husband's making a neutral statement about the past, not that he wants to be with that girlfriend again, just a neutral statement remembering a positive time. The wife becomes over serious about that event and now she is caught in that over-seriousness, and that's her reactivity. Or the classic kind of humorous way to look at over-seriousness, it's when somebody says, well, good morning, and another person says, well, what do you mean by that? That's the classic over-seriousness. I don't know, all I said was good morning. I, I meant nothing more than just good morning. They have become over-serious. If we become, what do you mean by that? If we're the ones saying, well, you never invited me to Kings Island the whole time we've been married, then we need to look at how over-seriousness plays out in our lives. Let me give you one other example. Uh, a 62-year-old father tells his 30-year-old daughter, who is divorcing her husband, I want to support you during your hard time. I know it's hard for you, honey. If there's anything I can do, let me know. And the daughter says back to him, all the men in my life abandoned me, starting with you, Dad. Now, do you see any over-seriousness there? By the way, Dad has apologized about 10 times for the things that went wrong in their childhood. He's tried to be kind and supportive to his daughter, but his daughter is still caught in that. And so she becomes over-serious and can't accept easily the support and love her dad wants to give her right now. So over-serious is a real problem, and it indicates an immaturity and indicates some issues that need to be resolved. Let me use the example of the skin. Uh, the skin is a good organ to think of how our self should be in terms of a healthy way. The skin should be moist, supple, smooth, flexible. If it becomes hard, brittle, uh, blistered, cracking, dry, solid, then it doesn't function near as well. The skin as an organ needs to be smooth and functional in that way. So does our sense of self. So does who we are needs to be that way and not become hard and rigid at some point. Because once we become hard and rigid, that's not a healthy biological state, nor is it a healthy emotional state. And that's why when people try to engage me in controversial examples, and people do that all the time. Having been a pastor in the past, the I have a number of people say, well, what do you think about XYZ? They're always wanting to, and I can tell they've already become over serious. I'm not the final authority on X, Y, and Z. Does it matter what I think about X, Y, and Z? I mean, does it matter about their care or what's going on with them or how I'm helping them? Oftentimes, it's an issue they have that they haven't resolved, and they're trying to draw me into it. Uh, you know, do you believe in baptism and that you should do it uh, in this form or that form? Or do you believe, you know, and it's like, why are we talking about this? I didn't bring it up. And why do those doctrinal beliefs, if that's what you believe, that's fine. You don't have to use that as a test uh, to pressure our relationship. It's not necessary. And that indicates to me some immaturity on their part. <clears throat> what I advise people to do is to notice over-seriousness in your life and in others. Notice when you become over-serious. Resist, own, and resolve your own over-seriousness. When you become over-serious, begin to look at, identify what you need and want, because often you probably haven't done that, and so over-seriousness becomes a problem. Um, ask yourself, if you want to deal with over-seriousness, ask yourself, what would I lose, or what would be the downside of not being over-serious about this? 
What fears would I have? What anxiety would that create? What problems would that cause for me? I know I used a, I used an example where, um, and I didn't share that example, but I might now, an example, because religion is also one of those where people become really very over serious. And you can be talking and just posing the thought of, you know, with, with all of astrophysics that we know, you know, I just wonder how God fits into that. And I'm just pondering that. And then someone pipes up, well, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible, the word says, da 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 and then they quote scripture and go on. And they become very serious when someone's just pondering openly. And they become serious and almost it becomes a test of faith for everyone. And again, that's where someone is, becomes over serious about a situation. So let me use some examples that I've given you as to how we might take a look at what's behind the overseriousness. With the daughter and the dad, if the daughter did not become overserious with her dad, if she were to think about that and go, boy, I really wanted to get upset with my dad. I really wanted to blame him for the past or whatever. And if I didn't say that, if I didn't get overserious, then I would feel dad would get away with what he did when I was a child and how he treated me as a parent. There's a clue as to what needs to be resolved in the daughter, not fixed in the dad. That's for dad to fix. But what needs to be fixed in the daughter so she so she doesn't get owned by that. So she doesn't get so she doesn't give her power away because of that. Let's look at the Bible example. If the person who's got to quote that scripture and has to preach to everyone about what the Bible says at this moment, just when someone was harmlessly thinking about, you know, the metaphysics of astronomy and physics and God, oftentimes, because I have been that person who has been over serious about the scripture, about the Bible, and I take a look at if I didn't do that, if I didn't bring up the scripture and quote the scripture to everyone, well, I can't let someone not understand what the Bible says, or God would be mad at me, or I would not be witnessing enough to please God. And again, those are my issues that I haven't resolved. Uh, God's very, very capable of taking care of his universe. I'm not the one that has to make it all work. And then end up alienating everybody in my life by becoming over serious. The husband and the King's Island example. And so if the wife did not get over serious, my husband would not know how much I wish he would pay attention to me and treat me in a special way. Again, that's an issue for the wife that she hasn't resolved and learning how to ask for those needs, working out those wants within her marriage rather than just becoming over serious and then causing a breakdown between the two of them in an argument. So, and she also did not feel special or didn't feel like people paid attention to her when she was a child. So that's an old historical thing that she brings to her marriage as well. Let me give you one other example about secrets. Secrets are another way of being over serious. Secrets are about being over serious. And why is that? Because if I didn't keep the secret, and I shared the secret, I would feel, if anyone knew the secret, I would not be loved, I would not be accepted, I would not be cared about, I would feel abandoned, shamed, or I would feel my shame or feel my guilt, and so I keep this a secret. Then, every time that issue arises, we become over serious. And you've seen that in families before. You know the no discussion topics that families have? This is a non-discussable. These are the things we can't talk about in our family. Dad's alcoholism, um, uh, my sister, uh, I'm using an example of a family in which a sister got uh, sexually abused growing up. We don't talk about that because a stepdad did that, so we can't talk about that. We can't talk about Aunt Mary's drug addiction. We, can, we have all these secrets that we can't talk about. 
And so therefore, anytime anything gets near that topic, everyone becomes over serious. And of course, one of the best antidotes for over seriousness is playfulness. I didn't mean silliness, I meant playfulness. In other words, I want to stay loose and not caught and stuck and connected. Which is why when Andrew says, Dad, you're the worst dad in the world, I say, you're right. I agree with you. I think it's horrible that you have the worst dad in the world. I'm being playful because I'm not going to get caught in what's going on. If you'd like help with self-differentiation, and if you'd like to learn more about being yourself and staying connected to others, give me a call. Use my email address and contact me. You can find contact information on the screen. I do see clients in the office or online. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.